Hi there, it's me, Melissa, from designsbylittlebee.etsy.com. Today I'm going to be doing what I hope is a quick tutorial showing you how I add personalization to a blank embroidery design using Embrilliance Essentials. Specifically in, in the hoop embroidery design, which is important to note because of that finishing bean stitch that is present on so many in the hoop designs like uh, bookmarks or felties snap tabs, etc. I am working with a design that I just released. It's a plain blank bookmark. This is something you can do in a 4x4 hoop. I have a tutorial that I will post below this video on how to make these. They're super easy, they're fun, uh, you, can, you can do them in a small hoop, and so they just make great little stocking stuffers or gifts or happies for somebody who needs them. Now in the past few weeks, I have released some in the hoop bookmark designs that have a certain theme. Like I have a mail truck, a llama, a hedgehog, a unicorn, just a bunch of different little designs and they match up with the bookmark. They appear at the top of the bookmark and it will only specifically stitch that thing. But it occurred to me that you guys might want to make your own bookmark like with a design that you already have, a small kind of fill design, maybe a felty if it's okay with the digitizer that you use it that way. It's always okay with me if you use my felties for other projects. Um, or a monogram, an initial, a team name, sports, numbers, anything you can think of you can add to these blank designs. So I thought I would do a tutorial to show you how I use Embrilliance Essentials to personalize these myself. So what I have here is one a single in the hoop bookmark. It's just a rectangle, not that fancy. What that consists of is one step that is a placement for your bookmark and then you will, it's just a, a single running stitch all the way around and then you'll place your vinyl or whatever fabric you are using to cover that placement and you'll run your personalization and then you will run the second step which is the same as the first, but it is a bean stitch. And that is typical of any in the hoop kind of standalone project in that you will place a backing fabric underneath it, like a, a felt or pleather or another piece of vinyl, etc. And then you run that finishing bean stitch and then you remove it and you've got a nice finished project where you can't see those stitches on the back. So I've got my bookmark loaded up here, and I also opened my Australia felty. I thought this was a great example to give for this particular project because, number one, it's my design, so I'm telling you that it's okay if you use it for this purpose. And number two, it's just a plain design. It doesn't have any fill. Uh, it doesn't require any fabric unless you want to do it that way. It's just an outline, and that is it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to click on my Australia felty, and you'll see that this felty, since it doesn't have any other fill stitches or anything like that, it goes in three steps. The first one is placement for your felty. The second is the, um, the tack down for your felty, since it doesn't have anything else in the middle. And then the third step of the felty, and the final step of felty and this is true of all of my felties and I want to say probably most other digitizers too I think we all do a the last step as a finish what, what I call a finishing bean stitch that's so you can place something underneath your hoop to cover those ugly stitches on the back and then run this step last you might want to run your stitch simulator up here and just look, you see how it goes one, two, and then that last blue step is the longest, and you see how it's doing a triple stitch, triple, 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 like that. If you're not sure, that's how you can figure out that it is the bean, st bean stitch step. So I'm going to click on that. I have a uh, Windows computer, so I'm going to do Control C, which copies it. And then I'm going to come over to my window with my bookmark and I'm going to do control V to paste it. We also have those same commands up here in, um, in edit. If, 
if you don't usually use the control keys, you can always come up here and find them. All we have to do now is resize our Australia shape and place it on the bookmark where we want. Now, thanks to Embrilliance's wonderful resizing capabilities, you can resize this Australia shape within reason and it will still stitch out okay because Embrilliance changes the stitches for you to compensate for how you change the size. Now you see up here it shows that I resized it 79.9%. There is a limit. I want to say it's 250% larger or 50% smaller. It's one of my favorite features of Embrilliance Essentials. So I then moved my shape up to the top of the bookmark because that's where I want it to stitch out. Now, you could take this over to your machine and stitch it out just like this if you wanted to. What you would need to do would be to stitch out that first bookmark, the, that's the placement, on your hoop stabilizer. And then you would need to skip forward to your Australia shape. And then you would go back one step to your finishing bean stitch. Now, if you don't know how to stop your machine from going to the next step, or you want it to, maybe you want to make multiples in a hoop, or maybe you just want it to stitch out in the correct order right off, here's what you can do. You grab that finishing bean stitch, mine is red, I'm going to do a uh, copy I do it with my control keys. You can come over here and do copy, cut, and then I'm going to click on my Australia and I'm going to do a paste. And now it is pasted after the Australia. So now if you took this right over to your machine, and make sure they're all different colors. If you took this over to your machine, it would stitch out in that order. One thing I do need to remind you, in Essentials, you need to go up to um, your preferences right here, go down to files, and make sure that this remove overlaps when saving stitch files is not checked. That is a function that will take out any stitches that are repeated. And in here, you'll see that our bookmark shapes are the exact same. So your finishing bean stitch pretty much wouldn't stitch out because these are different objects and so Essentials would try to help you by taking out the stitches that are repeating but we don't want it to help us in that way because the repeating stitches are important in this so make sure that's a common thing when people save a design to their machine and they say oh no half of my design is missing well that's because you had that box checked so if you look in the Embrilliance group it's called on Facebook it's called Brilliant Embrilliance Embroidery if you search remove hidden stitches, you will find a million results for that. So that's what I just did. Make sure that box is not checked. It's up here in preferences, under files. If I save this bookmark here to my machine, this is exactly how it would stitch out. It would do a placement for my bookmark. Then I would place the vinyl or felt or whatever I'm using. I would stitch out my Australia shape. And then I would place uh, some pleather is what I use on the back underneath my hoop and then I would run the finishing bean stitch and that would seal those all together like a sandwich then I would remove it and cut around my bookmark and it would be ready to go. Now if you're doing a craft fair or you're giving some of these as gifts and you want to do several in a hoop I'll show you one of my other favorite features of Essentials which is color sort. I would select all my entire um, design here I would do my wonderful control C for copy and then control V for paste. I want to grab that whole design, pull it over, give myself room to cut in the middle. And now I have two Australia shaped bookmarks. Go over here to center designs in the hoop. Now they're centered right there in the hoop. And if you stitched this out on your machine as is, it would do each step as shown over here. That would be good maybe if you were doing them in, if you were planning on doing the bookmarks in two different colors and you wanted to do them um, separately but in the same hoop. Now if you're doing a bunch of these in the same hoop 
and you want all of the placement stitches at the same to stitch at the same time, for example, and then the Australias to all stitch at the same time. Then you can come up here to Utility, go down here to Color Sort. It will tell you the design page has been reduced by three color changes. You click Save It, type in however you want to save it, Australia Bookmarks, click Save, and then, very important, it won't show up as color sorted right here on this screen. This is still your working file. So it still shows all those different steps. To see how it has saved in the color sort function, you're going to have to go to open and then go find your Australia bookmark. Open them. And here is your color sorted file. Make sure you do that. A lot of people get confused when they save a project using color sort because they're still on this working screen and they say, well, it didn't sort the color. See, they're still all there. Nope. You have to go into the folder wherever you saved your color sorted project, whether it's in your machine or in a folder, and you have to open that to see the color sort. And you can see right here, there are my three steps. Mine does green, then blue, then red. And if you're not sure if it saved it right or not, you can go right up here to your stitch simulator green, then it does all the blue Australias, and then it does all the red finishing bean stitch, so it saved it perfectly. So using those steps in Essentials, that is how you can merge different files that you have. Of course, be sure it's okay with a digitizer if you um, chop up their, their felties or small designs like that. For me, perfectly okay with any designs at designsbylittlebee.etsy.com for you to use your felties or your small field designs in any way that you like to personalize another, another project. Using these steps, you can also add a monogram, a name, anything that you like. All you need to know is either how to stop your machine and skip around to the steps, or you need to know how to copy and paste and recreate those finishing step, finishing stitches so that it stitches out in the, the order that you want, if that's how you want to do it. And using color sort, you can then create multiples of that project in a hoop. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful, and I hope it makes you feel excited about creating projects that are all your own using designs that you already have. You can find this blank bookmark design as well as that Australia felty I was using, along with Lots of other awesome embroidery designs at designsbylittlebee.etsy.com. I will put the links to everything I talked about in this video, including buying Embrilliance Essentials or any of their other awesome software, down below the video. If you like this tutorial and you'd like to see more videos that I do, including tutorials and just some fun stuff every now and then, please click on that red subscribe button down below the video to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I will chat with you on our next video. Bye.